Hello, I am going to give my presentation on the Fundalism versus Modernism debate on Harry Emerson Fawcett, the modernist preacher from New York. Um, Mr. Fawcett was born in 1878 in Buffalo, New York, uh, converted to Christianity at the age of seven, so he says. Um, he attended Colgate University and then the New York Theological Seminary, and he was ordained a Baptist minister in 1903 at the Madison Avenue Baptist Church in New York City. In 1911, he joined the faculty of the Union Theological Seminary, and he held that position until his retirement. Um, in 1918, he became the pastor at the First Presbyterian Church in New York while still a Baptist, strangely enough. Um, he held this position for the next seven years until he was kicked out for reasons we will shortly see. Um, one of the main reasons for his being removed from this pastorship was in 1922 he gave the sermon, Shall the Fundamentalists Win, in which he rejected the necessity of the virgin birth, the inerrancy of scripture, the idea of the premillennial second coming, and he called fundamentalists bitterly intolerant. Um, as you can imagine, this did not go over well with fellow fundamentalist pastors, and he became bitter enemies with J. Gresham Machen and William Jennings Bryan. Uh, one upshot for him for this was that Rockefeller, the billionaire industrialist, absolutely loved the sermon, printed out 130,000 copies of it, and sent them to every single Protestant minister in America, helping him become a household name. Um, this, as you can imagine, did not go over well with the Presbyterian uh, superiors that he had. And in 1925, after a series of events, they kicked him out of being the pastor at this church um, when he refused to convert to Presbyterianism or be ordained as a Presbyterian minister. Um, luckily, Rockefeller, still a fan, uh, helped him out by... Uh, helping him become the pastor at the Park Avenue Baptist Church in New York City, which he then renovated and became the Riverside Church, uh, paid for by Rockefeller himself. He was the pastor there for the next, oh, almost 20 years. Um, in 1935, though, he gave the sermon, The Church Must Go Beyond Modernism, which really distanced him from even his modernist uh, fellows. Um, in it, he criticized liberalism's habits of changing beliefs to accommodate culture, softening the reality of God, and downplaying both personal and social sins. Uh, his argument was that modernizing influences have made the church a product of its time, not of God. A uh, quote from the sermon is, Harmonizing slips easily into compromising. To adjust Christian faith to the new astronomy, the new geology, the new biology, is absolutely indispensable. But suppose that this modernizing process, well started, goes on and Christianity adapts itself to contemporary nationalism, contemporary imperialism, contemporary capitalism, contemporary racialism, harmonizing itself, that is, with the prevailing social status quo and the common moral judgments of our time. He then ended the sermon with, we cannot harmonize Christ with modern culture. What Christ does to modern culture is to challenge it. As you can imagine, this did not go over well with a church that was increasingly becoming more politicized, more interested in anyism. And then when you look especially at what the church was going under in Europe with the rise of Hitler and Nazism and all of this happening at the same time, you understand why he was worried and why he felt that this, this was going against the prevailing idea at the time. Another thing he was known for is he was very active in civil rights and would often invite black ministers to preach when he was uh, the pastor at the Riverside Church. Uh, he would employ different preaching styles, from Lutheran to Quaker services, just to show that we are all Christian. There's no differences in format, doesn't really change your belief. Uh, he preached for years, retired in 1946, which is the year he also retired from teaching at the uh, seminary, but he attended the church for the next 28 years before he died in 1969. Um, his legacy is lasting to this day. He wrote 50 books during his life, including The Meaning of Faith, The Meaning of Prayer, his autobiography, The Living of These Days, and the pastoral counseling pioneer on being a real person. Uh, but what he is perhaps best known for in his life is the radio show that he did from 1927 on called the National Vespers Hour, where he gave sermons to over 2 million listeners. And that is the legacy of 
Harry Emerson Foster.